From Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Mikey Show. For everyone out there that disagrees, change the channel. You're not worth it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. Nah. I am your host, right at our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And, um, you know, one thing we were talking about here in the studio is how some people really campaign hard. You've been watching these presidential campaigns. And now you're seeing uh, Obama and McCain, and they're out there, uh, you know, telling you what they want to do and telling you what's wrong with the other guy. And but they're really trying hard to get you to vote for them. Anything's possible right now, you know. It's like opening day in baseball. Anything's possible. Doesn't matter if it's McCain or Obama. These guys are telling you that whatever. Whatever has happened in the past few years, forget about that. It's all going to change. Everything's going to be great. And it's kind of that way with uh, with marriage, you know. Women are campaigning. Women are auditioning for the position. How many of you got that great girlfriend? You know the one I'm talking about. Sex anywhere, anytime. Oh, don't put that frying pan down. Let me make breakfast for you. Oh, here, let me vacuum. I'll vacuum the entire house for you. But I'll wait until the football game's over, honey. You watch that game. You sit back. Would you like another beer? They're auditioning for the gig. These chicks give great audition. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, they do. Some of you out there right now, you know, you're thinking about going to the mall and shopping for that ring. Because you just can't believe what a great girlfriend she is. You can't believe how good she is. And what you all don't realize is you're being snookered. She's auditioning. You know, in the radio business, we've got people. I don't want to mention any of them by name. Because they'd all sue me. But they know who they are. The people who had, like, uh, three great moments on the air, and so they edit them together and make a demo tape out of it. And the people who are thinking about hiring these guys think that the show is like this every day. The person's really talented, really funny. My God, listen to those impressions that guy does. I'll bet he'll be funny every day of the week. Then you find out when the guy gets the job, you know, he's calling in sick all the time, that he's, you know, the guy's insane. Everybody else at the station hates him. But that tape was unbelievable. Now, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. It could be anyone. There's just people like that. There are women like that. You just can't believe your good fortune. You are getting it at six ways from Sunday. Daytime, nighttime. Yeah, you're on, you're, you're on, you're in, you're in airports. You're at the men's room at LAX and she's in the stall with you. You're in your driveway. Anywhere, anytime. She, she's up for it. And at home, a new recipe every night. Great food. The food is good and the sex is good. And she's always you know, making you feel comfortable. Ooh, she's auditioning for the gig as Mrs. You. That's the, you've got a, you've got a position open. Nobody is currently playing the part of Mrs. You. And she's auditioning to be Mrs. You. Excuse all the people whose last name is you out there, but uh, seriously, she's auditioning to be Mrs. You. And you, you're dumb enough to think that once once she gets you to sign your name on the contract, that this stuff's going to continue. You're dumb enough to believe that. 
Holy cow! How stupid can you be? Are you kidding me? It's like the used car salesman. Look at this beauty over here. Look at it, shining in the sun. Look at it. Beautiful. Imagine yourself behind the wheel of this baby. Then you're behind the wheel of that baby, and it breaks down the side of the road. It's like, hey, you know what? Let the buyer beware. These chicks, they're just great at auditioning. Great. Just amazing. So you could very well be with somebody who's just auditioning for the part, and you're so, you know, you're drowning in testosterone, and you're, you're just out of breath from all the sex you're getting. And it's like, where do I sign? How do I sign up for this for life? Remember those record clubs they used to have? Do they still have those? Get ten records for a penny. And you're thinking, this is Fantastic. You checked off all the boxes. Yeah, I'd like uh, Seals and Crofts, and I'd like Simon and Garfunkel, and I'd like Cat Stevens, and I'd like uh, what? Uh, what was that other? They, they're always the same bands. It was Columbia Record Club, Loggins and Messina, huh. right? Brewer and Shipley, one toke over the line. Yeah, they, they had one hit, but the, their CD or their album was always like one of the albums. So you'd order your ten albums for a penny, and you thought you were the smartest guy in the room, right? The ten albums would arrive, and you'd be going, look at me. I got ten albums for a penny. That was until they started sending you two albums a month for twelve ninety nine a piece. And you couldn't stop them. You would you would have to write in, and you'd have to spend a postage stamp to write and say, I don't want this month's selection. Then they'd tell you they didn't get your letter, and they, they would send you the albums anyway, and then you'd be spending half your life sending back albums you didn't want. That's what marriage is like. It's like the old Columbia Record Club. <laughs> you thought they outlawed slavery in 1865. You had no idea. Seriously. Oh, my God. They're still in business as Columbia House. Is that true? Look at that. Now it's DVDs. How many DVDs do you get for a penny now? <laughs> Same deal. Yeah, you go right ahead and sign up for that. You're one smart shopper. Book of the Month Club. Look at that. Five books for a dollar. Wow. That's what that's what's going on when when they, these chicks are auditioning for the part of Mrs. You. Anyway, our telephone number here one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. We'll be joined later this hour by comedian D. L. Hughley, who we have not seen in a while. It'll be good to see him again. But in the meantime, your telephone calls Zach on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Tom. Good to be on with you. I know. Listen, I, I just want to put it out there. Uh, marriage is not necessarily the, the beast that you make it out to be. I mean, I'm 37. I, I waited, I waited late in the game. I spent, I spent a good 15, 16 years trying to, trying to bag the whole world and, you know, had a good run of it. But at a certain point, it, it, it starts to just wear thin. And if you really find the right person, I mean, it, it can work. I'm happily married. It's been four years, not, not 40. So, you know, maybe Fine, things, you know, but, somebody but, will win the big spin this weekend. You know, it just probably won't be me. And it probably won't be the average person listening either. Yeah, well, okay, so, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, you, you always seem to come from the viewpoint that, it, that it's just absolutely a bad thing. No, 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 I mean, again, somebody might win the lottery. Somebody might win the Irish sweepstakes. Somebody will win American Idol, okay? It's just okay. not likely to be the, the vast majority of people who try. Well, that, that I agree unequivocally. And, and the thing and, is, and sometimes the you, wait, the you have to look at you risk are. versus, you have to look at risk versus reward. The risks are so great and the reward is so distant for most people. It doesn't make sense for most people to do it. Uh, agreed. So just agreed. because you got lucky, son, doesn't mean that most people will. 
Well, and by the way, yeah. you <laughs> have only been married for four. <laughs> you you have only been married for four years. Let's see after ten years. True. When she could take you to the cleaners permanently. Well, yeah. I mean, yes. You know, I mean, I, I can't predict the future, but. Uh... You know, it's just I, I, I think the the real point I want to make is is for guys. I mean, wait, wait, go bag the world, and then and then when it's really right, if you're really no, sure it's, it's right, no, 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 it, you know, you're never really sure it's right. You know what? One hundred percent of the people who get married are really sure it's right, and fifty percent of them are wrong. <laughs> but more than that. No, about 50% get divorced. It is more than that because there's a number and, of people... And, and the other 40 end up in an unhappy marriage. So, that, you know, that, well, I, mean, I don't know if it's the other 40, but that's my point. Well, okay. I mean, I, I personally... I'm not going to bag on the people who do. I personally don't buy lottery tickets. Yeah. I, I yeah, could yeah. afford them. And, and imagine how much you could win. Personally, I would rather put the uh, dollars that I save in a mutual fund... And let it grow to a nice small fortune, rather than trying to win one hundred and seventy million dollars. Well, understood. Which I'm not likely to win. <laughs> understood. I just wanted to be the voice of a male here that uh, is not bagging on. You know, that's not bagging. But that's on only because you are. Look, the people who win the lottery are they bagging on the lottery? <laughs> no. Did you ever see someone win the lottery and say, "Don't buy lottery tickets"? Yeah, you got me. You got me. I was coming on to to go to spar with you, and uh, and you took you took the wind out of it. But uh... you damn straight, I did. Tom Likas, one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. In the industry I'm working in, I've been in it two years. I've already been promoted to the top of the level of where I can be after two years because I put that hard work in, and I didn't pay for everything. You know what I mean? I did it the way, the Tom Likas way, the man way. It's the Tom Likas show. It's the Tom Likas show. I want 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Angela on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Tom. How are you? Good. That's good. I'm really happy that uh, someone picked up the phone finally. <laughs> what do you mean, finally? Well, because I've been trying to call and I couldn't get through. And finally I did, which is wonderful. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes. Well, I just wanted to say my point because um, about the marriage thing, and I completely, completely agree with you 110%, or maybe so 150%, because I used to be married, and it was a very, very horrible experience for me. Okay, and, and I really think that, um, you know, like, for, like right now I'm completely divorced, and that's true, because after marriage, what will happen after that? You know, I mean, women always find something that they want something. Okay, and then what's next? Okay, first you get into a relationship. Okay, you, you know, your boyfriends and girlfriends, and then the next thing she'll be expecting for a ring on her finger. And then after that, you know, they're going to be expecting for marriage. And then what's going to happen after that? You know, it seems like there's always the next big step to go. And I think the last step will always be a divorce. And then they will start all over again. Now, the problem that there is, is the, the more sufferings in the, in the divorce is actually the children, you know, which is not really good for, for, for those young kids. Because, like, for example, right now, I know I'm 34 years old. I do have a relationship. I have a steady relationship with my boyfriend of 10 years. He's always pushing me to get into marriage. And I'm like, why even married when we're happy right now? You know, why even change something? Why make it horrible? You know, like right now we live in different houses. You know, I have my own house. I have my cars. I can do whatever I want. I can go to the dermatologist. I can make myself look good. I can buy whatever I want. No one's stopping me from doing whatever I want. And the same thing with him. You know, he doesn't have to worry about paying for the van so that our 10 kids, you know, will be taken to baseball practice and stuff like that. So I really think that, you know, and, you know marriage is something that's actually a deathbed for men. Okay, I mean, and 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 that's all I have to say because I really think that it's not really the ultimate. So, we're, happiness. so those of us who are married just laying here waiting to die. Exactly, and I and I and I, people calling you and saying that you know what we are so completely happy with our marriage and and we've been married for like six years. Six years is not enough. 
Okay. I mean, my parents have been married for almost 60 years. Uh, I'm exaggerating. Probably um, 45 years, you know, and it was rough. Well, you 60 know, and 45 up. are two different amounts, which I is... No, I know. I'm, it's 45. I'm sorry. I was 45 is not almost 60. <laughs> I know, I know. That's right. You know, that's going to make me like 75 years old. Anyway, so, but the, the point is, you know, I really think that um, they probably haven't gotten to the point where... You know, the, the, the realization is not there yet. You know what I mean? And, then, and and eventually when they realize it and they get off this marriage, they will feel so great that they're finally free. Okay? I mean, of course, it'll hurt in the beginning. You know, they will, they will say, oh, my God, I miss her and whatever, what have you. But then, you know, it, it, I really think that, you know, that, that I, I'm sorry to say, but marriage is just not really the ultimate happiness thing that one can ever get. You know, you can be happy on your own, doing your own thing, making your own money, and no one's controlling you, you know, where you're going to be spending your money, and you can do whatever you want, and no one's going to stop you for that. Right. I, yeah, I'm you perfectly know? okay with that. I, the, the problem is when you live in the same house, you, ooh, let's get checked. Oh, God, no. I, don't, I can't even imagine myself living with my boyfriend in the same house. Let's I get a joint checking it. account with both our names on it. There's just no way that I, you know, I can share my house with somebody else. You know, I live in a five-bedroom home, and I'm not even going to share my garage with him. There's just no way. You know, and and I think he feels the same way too. He wants his space. He's you know, a lucky there, man. Yeah, there are times, you know, when you know he would be like, oh, you know, and there was a time when he was really forcing me to get married. And I'm like, you know what? We're not on the same page. If you want to marry, find somebody else. That's just not me. Okay, I've been there. I've done that. It was horrible. It, it wasn't a very good experience for me. I'm happy right now, and I don't want to change anything. I don't blame you, Angela. I thank you for the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Sed on the Tom Liga Show. Is that short for Cedric? Hello? Oh, boy. Hello? Hello? You get three hellos, and then I hang up. Hey, I'm here. When do you plan to start talking? Hey, this is Ted. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Ted? Yes. Oh, with a T? Yes. Not a C? <laughs> yes. All right. Our All Italian right. screener uh, put that your name was Sed with a C. <laughs> he didn't seem to think there was anything weird about a name like Sed. <laughs> hey, Tom. So, uh, hey, I just wanted, Maybe that's um, an Italian name, Sed. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, I just wanted to pick up uh, a few callers back where you were uh, telling that caller uh, there's no benefit to a man getting married. Yes. And uh, I just, I, I think that the main benefit to getting married is for the family. I, I, I'm not disagreeing that there's benefits specifically to the children and there are benefits to the women, but uh -huh. there's no benefit to a man. Right, but, um, like, the, the whole thing, like, me, I'm a selfish person. And <laughs> I like, you know, uh, I do my stuff and I'm, you know, I don't care about other people. And uh, being married and being in a committed relationship with my wife has, like, made me less selfish and, like, more loving. And um, Less selfish and more loving. Well, we'll find out how uh, that uh, works out <laughs> for you if you get divorced. Yeah, so it's been a good thing for me. And, um, yeah, and like... No, no, uh, it's like been good for you so far. But in the end, if things don't work out, it's going to be good for her, but not you. Yeah, but we've, we've gone through a lot of fights already, and it's been nothing like we make up, and we both have a commitment. And um, that's well, I personally don't like so. having fights. If someone wants to have fights with me, I, they're down. I, I have a zero tolerance for fighting, arguing, criticizing, and critiquing. Nagging, out. Zero. Right. right. And then just the other thing, like you just already mentioned, I wanted to mention, like, uh, you know, like the Virginia Tech and Columbine and even closer to home, docks and our shootings. You know how th those are all um, in all those cases. You know, there's either been no parental attachment or there's been no family there, and um, you know, just like you know, we're hurting. You know, like you said, our divorce rate's like fifty percent. Yeah, but so, it's it's fifty percent because I think marriage is a flawed institution. Well, it's I, I think that's the only thing I did really disagree with you on then because I think marriage and family is the best institution. It's happened all the way back from Adam and Eve. And, uh, it allows you uh, the times have changed. I mean, first of all, I don't even know that Adam and Eve ever existed. Right, no, the here. times are different today atheist. than they were 2008 years ago. They're different. No, I hear you. I used to be an atheist. I'm a Christian now. But, um, yeah, it's, I think it, it's the best institution to foster love and um, 
I, I don't agree with that at all. It is it, it is an institution that fosters uh, complacency. It fosters a uh, feeling of entitlement. Um, uh, you can have love without marriage. You're right, but that's because we can't make commitments today. We're like a fast food society. We can't make commitments well. We, we, you can only deal with the society you're living in. Okay, if uh, if I were living, uh, you know, a thousand years ago, maybe I'd have a different attitude about it. But I yeah. don't. I live in today's society, and today's society is what it is. Yeah, but like I think I'm living a, a, a better life than other people. Like I don't. I'll never have as much money as power as you do. But you know, I've got I've got a loving wife and a. You know, and I'm committed to that all my life, no matter how bad she gets. Well, I don't have fights with anybody. I don't have anybody telling me what I can and can't do. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what I think. I think you know, So you don't have a better that. life than I have. You chose a different path, and you're happy with what you chose, and I'm happy with what I chose. But you can't tell me that uh, that you're better than I am because because you have a wife. Or because... No, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I'm better than you are. I'm saying if I could choose between money and power, I'd rather have love i'd rather give love and receive love and that's what you know that's what you do in a marriage you give and then receive love even when they turn out to be really uh not what you thought <laughs> well I, again I, I, i'm telling you it. it's the same thing it, it, like everybody doesn't agree on that okay and uh in my, but believe me many people love me but i don't have to pay them alimony if we stop talking yeah well and again my you know i, I think as, as we raise america as our generation is raising america that's what I want to see. I want to see people who are married because that's what I've seen personally, you know, working with kids, myself and my, myself. I've been married three years. But, um, you know, I, I do. I, I think that's the best thing for us is to have a, that um, institution. I'd hate to see the state start raising our kids. Well, um, first of all, uh, what's happening is that single mothers are raising our kids. Yeah. And that's because women insist on having kids without a man around. Yeah, I totally agree. I don't like that either. But I, but by the same token, I, as a man, I, I don't want to be put in a position where the state can tell me how much money I have to pay somebody. Yeah. And that's the position you're in right now. Yeah. If for some reason your wife decides to leave you, reasons you can't envision right now, yeah. uh, you will have to pay her. And the state's going to tell you how much. And um, with uh, with my wife, you know, it's um, we you know we had those vows, you know, for better for worse, and you know, so we're in that um, committed relationship. And I, you know, things change, but you know, the more I, I would I would love to see us be more committed, you know, America, you know, committed to other people. And um, you know, if we make that commitment, and um, it, it fosters that loving environment, you know, even if you don't have kids, you know, I'd even make an argument that it would help out. You know, a marriage relationship because, like, when I'm a jerk and my wife knows it and she forgives me, that's like, that's awesome, you know? I can be a jerk and I don't need forgiveness because I am not married. Right. But I, I know I don't ever have to worry about. I can be a jerk as much as I like and I don't have to apologize to anyone. Right. But we're talking, yeah, as far as the committed, you know, being in a committed relationship for marriage, I'm talking about marriage and a family here. I, I know so, what you're talking about. The little little Johnny is stable when he's growing up, and the wife knows that you know even when she's getting some wrinkles, you know she's going to feel loved because she knows I'm committed to her. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I hear what you're talking about, but I'm telling you that uh, even religious people yeah. uh, get divorced. In fact, eighty-two yeah, percent oh. of Americans believe in God. Fifty percent of Americans get divorced. That means there's an awful lot of Christians yeah, no, who are I getting divorced. Yeah, the divorce rate for Christians is the same because we don't even know what commitment is. Well, I don't know what you know. All I know is that getting married doesn't guarantee you anything except alimony and lifetime payments to somebody else. Yeah, and unless you have uh, you know, a mutual commitment. No, it still guarantees. It guarantees that if anything goes wrong, yeah. it guarantees you'll be paying. That's the only guarantee you have. It can, but it can also give the stability for them. No, it does not give stability. Stability is given from yourself. A, a contract with the state where you live, in your case, California, does not guarantee you any stability. If it did, how would so many people be getting divorces? Just, just I would just say the same thing, just because they don't understand commitment. Like, I mean, no matter what. I mean, like, if two people say no matter what. But why do I you mean, need the state of California to tell you what a commitment is? I, I wouldn't say it's so the state of state California, California can't give you a driver's license without sending you all around the building. 
I, I, I agree, but I'd say it's it's more important because you're doing it publicly be- before God and before man, and everybody knows that you've made that commitment. If you if it's just you and Jenny, you know, you can tell everybody, you know, hey, I'm committed to my girlfriend here. We're committed. Yeah. You don't need the state of California getting involved. I don't need yeah. a smog check from the state of California, and I don't need a marriage certificate either. Yeah, I would say it would need to be official. So I mean, it's public before man and God. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see anything about that for uh, for the state of California. Well, that, that's what makes it official. You go into the state of California. You went to the same building where you apply for a dog license, and you yeah. applied for a marriage license. Yeah. So you had to get the state of California to sign off on your marriage. Yeah, actually, I went. Uh, I went to Vegas, so I had fine. To Governor Nevada, <laughs> don't be a brick. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yep. All right, Ted or Sed or whatever your name is. Thank you for the call. Coming up next, we'll be joined by comedian D.L. Hughley. Stay right there. Like it, like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Do you have kids? By design, I do not. You don't. By design. By design. Yes. By dictionary. Stupid bitch. It's the Tom Likes Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likes Show. Thank you for tuning in. And joining us here at Studio DL Hughley. We have not seen DL in a while. Man, working like you know, I gotta play for that I gotta pay for that place in Solvent. I did not know you were yeah. practically around the corner from me. I am. I am. I live uh, I live right next door to the sheriff of uh, Ventura County. Really? Of Santa Barbara County, yeah. The one who in, who uh, uh arrested Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you figure you live next door to the sheriff, your place is gonna be fun. And and people drive by the, the black guy lives there. <laughs> Well, and they know it ain't Michael Jackson because they would have said the beige dude lived there. <laughs> but I dig it a lot, man. I dig it a lot. It's great up there, isn't it? I don't get up there as much. As my, you know, my wife and kids go out there a lot. We spend a lot of holidays out there. I don't get get up there as much. And we have a wash where they wild boar. You can't close it up because wild boar come through. Now, huh? a brother from the city go outside <laughs> and see a pig with tusks. That's right. <laughs> yeah, man. And that looks like dinner to me. I'll tell yeah, you what. Right. And then this like uh, one of my neighbors. He hunts them with a knife, like he hunts boar, like in Paso Robles. Really? Yeah. Like he, I guess, with they, a knife. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's some it's some things I'd never know about. You know, what you I mean? gotta have guts to do that. <laughs> Those or, things or are a dangerous. lot of wine. That's exactly right. <laughs> now, people who know about you is you're a wine freak like I, I am. I really am. Yeah. In fact, we're sitting here drinking some Bordeaux right now. <laughs> right. But you know, it's funny. You were talking, telling me about how you you'd gone to Burgundy and, and Bone in France. Yeah. Um, it's funny because now, in all the good food, now everything that's good for you, like tomatoes, you can't eat tomatoes. They're key. I know. It's a dude right now picking the tomatoes and spinach off a of ham, cheese, and mayonnaise sandwich going, I better, <laughs> I better get this off of here, Key. <laughs> Someone today made a drink for me with a raw egg in it, and they were like, you know there's a raw egg in this. I said, oh, don't worry about it. They're going to put a tomato in it. <laughs> Yeah, all the good stuff. <laughs> you know, if you die from eating tomatoes, you're at home going, damn, I should have had the pig feet. <laughs> <laughs> so how you doing? You're, I'm wonderful. Man. You're everywhere. Of course, the only place I see you is on television. <laughs> I never see you here right. anymore. You're always my, on TV. My, 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 my uh, kids say the same thing. I've been working a lot, man, and it was... Uh, it's uh, I'm really having a good time. After Studio 60 went off, it was just, and then the strike. It ta- the strike taught me a valuable lesson, and it's that you rely on yourself and not studios. Because you never yeah. know what's going to be in, in vogue and what's out of vogue. So being in the, and, and you, it, ironically, I've been everywhere there's been a primary. Everywhere there's been a Democratic really? primary. Really? I was in South Dakota. Any, any black people in South Dakota is in a witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> just tell them you're an Indian that's dark. <laughs> but, I was in West Virginia, and you know it's funny because I, I was in P- Puerto Rico when they had the primaries. Uh, I, you know, I, I like both of them, her and him. Uh, but the to- race was taking a toll on her. At one, she started to look old, man. At one point, she started to look like Willie Nelson. I was like, "Well, that's what starts happening." <laughs> Damn. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, look at Clinton. You ever? Yeah. You, you know, lately, they've been showing like old footage of, uh, of Clinton. Yeah. You know, because uh, I guess they've been showing a lot of presidential uh, video lately, right. and Clinton looked completely different. He actually looked like he's wearing a powder wig. 
That's right. <laughs> he looks like Thomas Jefferson. Now. Yeah, and so, Bush the same thing. Yeah. I mean, this, you know, they know stuff we don't know. Mm -hmm. Stuff that if it doesn't curl your hair, it's turning it great. Right, There's just right. no doubt about it. <laughs> and they look old fast, like two years in. They look, and uh, you know, I, I just say this. How bad a president are you when the country goes, we're going to try the black guy next? We, <laughs> I don't know. We, we, we're going to try the black dude. I don't even know. Well, that's what I said. How much, how much does America hate women? Right. Well, they, they're actually going to try the black guy. Right, right, right. That's how much. <laughs> I think, you, you know, uh, America is so funny because uh, apparently Obama's having a hard time connecting with the rural Democrats because for whatever reason, whatever they grow stuff, they don't like black people, which I don't understand because at one point farmers loved us. <laughs> 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 you, they couldn't get it done without us. Apparently they miss us. But uh, uh, it's it's so funny that we are uh, we, we're, we're, we're making a historical choice. I've never th I never thought would ha happen. And it's just it's a great time for a comedian. Tell us why. Why uh, it's a great time for a comedian? I mean, just look. You look up and there's a politician in, in, in New York who had to resign. Early especially had to resign just because he had a hooker. Who knew that was illegal? Like, but this dude wrote a check for a hooker. Now, I've never been governor, but I have hired a hoe or two, and you don't write checks for them. I mean, that's, that's, that's a cash and carry business right there. <laughs> and what do you, what is that, Sunshine with a C or S? <laughs> and then they replaced him with David Patterson, who's black, blind, admitted he did several, co uh, several, uh, has affairs with several women and did cocaine. <laughs> and, and his wife did too. Yeah, so they messed around and hired Ray Charles. <laughs> that, they, they, they got it right out of the way at the beginning. I just want to tell you, before we get started. <laughs> Because when you're black and blind, you can get away with anything. You mean that wasn't my wife? I'm as shocked as you are. This CNI dog ain't worth a damn. And then you had, what, Larry Craig, the senator from Idaho, got caught in the bathroom. Oh, that was the best. On the floor for gay sex. Who knew that was a sign for gay sex? But I will never go to the bathroom with an iPod again as long as I live. <laughs> what happens when you tap your foot on the floor, Tom? Does a big penis come out the ceiling like an oxygen mask? On the <laughs> what happens? Who knows? So uh, it's certainly a great not gonna, time. I'm not going to stick my foot under the star, I'll <laughs> right. tell you that. I got a wide stance. Exactly. <laughs> wow, if your stance was as narrow as your views, you'd have never gotten in trouble, man. <laughs> And then, and then you got, uh, everybody's rushing to get married. Like, it's always funny because whenever there's a political season, gay marriage seems to rear up. Uh, and now, uh, you know, and it's, if you want to get married, get, I mean, I, I don't understand why that's a political issue. And I think that it's just so funny to live in a country that, uh, that uh, gets so easily preoccupied. So easily preoccupied, like, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm, it's very interesting. Very good time to be a comedian. We have a very short attention span. That's the way it is. Right. Man. So, uh, you know, the minute they say they'll start talking about flag burning or gay marriage, <laughs> right. or these same stupid issues, right. when they got nothing to say about what's really going right. on. Right. I mean, look, Cedar Rapids, Iowa is under six feet of water right, right now. Right. So let's talk about gay marriage. Right. <laughs> can the gay swim? Can they swim? Oh, <laughs> uh, you, you, you know, you can't even buy. Uh, more than two bags of rice. Now, there are apparently food shortages. I will say this, that when black people was in the field, we never ran out of anything. Uh, our Mexican brothers and sisters got to get on the stick now. It's their turn. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn now. Ante up, damn it. <laughs> and, I, and I love going to Napa, though. I really do. I think you, you, you like French wine, but I think California. Cal no, I, well, most of my cellar is California wine. I was going to say, most of my cellar is a bottle of California wine. <laughs> <laughs> and I go there, my wife, and they're like, well, we grow the Chardonnay grape. In the ca they're very snobby people. Like, very. We grow the Chardonnay grape. We go to Cabernet grape. I'm like, man, if you grow stuff, you're a farmer. That's, That's right. You are. That's exactly right. By the way, if you talk to most of those winemakers, they'll tell you, I'm nothing more than a farmer. Right. They'll tell you, but the magazines make them into these big superstars, mm -hmm. and like, there's these guys. Mm -hmm. They grow grapes. They stand out in the sun from five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> That's what they do. Let me see grapes, jelly, or raisins. Let me. What's going to? <laughs> and then you go to these restaurants, and I, you know, I love restaurants. I do, but one of the things about the, the, the higher the restaurant, the more garnish they have on your plate, like parsley. Like oh, yes. I, I said, dude, why you got parsley in my plate? It's a decoration to make your plate look pretty. Wouldn't an extra shrimp make my plate look even better? <laughs> <laughs> you, you want my plate to make my plate look good? <laughs> Put an extra wing on there. A couple of rare slices of Kobe beef mm -hmm. would make it look really good. <laughs> right. I just had the, uh, you know what I've never had in my life ever, ever, ever? Two things I've never had in my life that I had for New York the first time. What's that? I had veal. Never had that veal. Really? Yeah, because I, you know, I just, the, the, you know, people make you feel bad. You eat veal, it never wakes up and it never gets to see light and 
And I was like, and then I felt bad. I prefer cows because they, they they get slaughtered, but they have a little time <laughs> right. of the sun before they get killed. Right. right. And Kobe, they sing to them and then they shoot them in the head. Right. They give them a little beer and massage them to death. That's what they do. <laughs> it's like being in a trailer park. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> but I had never had that, and I had never had a ribeye. Really? No, never. I always uh, a fillet. I, I never had a ribeye. But I'm telling you. And, I, you know, people tell you red meat is bad for you, but that's the way to go, man. Absolutely. That's the way to go. Well, especially if you like red wine like you do I and do. I do. Uh, the, what else goes with red wine better than, than red <laughs> meat? <laughs> red <laughs> dripping. A Blood. steak, some wine, and a, and a hot chick. You got a weekend. Huh? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I told you I plan a gig uh, uh, out in uh, what did I say? Pismo Beach. So I'm a drive mm. down, and I'm a I'm a. Uh, if you're in town that weekend, I come by. We'll excellent. We'll go to dinner because I I'm I'm telling you, I'm right in, in Solvay. I will take you. I will take you for the best prime rib you ever had. You've had prime rib. I oh think. yeah, I've had prime rib. Prime rib, Maddie's Tavern, the best you ever had. Okay, now I'm gonna keep you to that because Lowry's is a pretty good prime rib. Lowry's is a very good prime rib. Maddie's Tavern. Is the best you ever had. <laughs> and you know what I had that I see, cause that, that's my thing now. I'm going around the cu- country and I'm trying to try stuff. I had marrow. Really? Yeah, I didn't like that. I'm it, not a, I'm not like a marrow. Fan. peanut butter. Yeah. Like, and you said, and you, you charged me all this for that? <laughs> <laughs> it cost so much ounce. I'm like, what's in here? Cocaine? What yeah. is in here? Well, that's like sweetbreads. Yeah. Sweetbreads, you'd think they're going to be like, you know, cookies or crackers yeah. or biscuits or sweetbreads yeah. or brains. Yeah. Yeah. The brains. Yeah. And and my thing is I don't want to go I don't want to be one of them dudes who like go to places and eat the same thing all the time, which I, you know, so now I'm just trying to, you know, eat whatever it sounds like like I I'll make the waiter pick a pick a good thing and and go with it. Make I don't let them pick wine no more cuz I went to that place uh the French Laundry. Me and my wife went to the French yeah. Laundry and I let my wife uh showing off for of my wife I let the dude pick a what is the guy's name? The wine guy. Oh, the the the, the concierge. Not the concierge. Sommelier. Yeah. So, yeah. I let him pick all the wine. End of the night, it was uh, eighteen hundred dollars. But they picked the good stuff, right? I don't care what they picked for eighteen hundred dollars. I was about to whip his ass. And then they let me back in the kitchen where they were like eighteen hundred dollars because they picked uh, you know the wine to have courses and they kept coming out. This would be great. And I'm like, sir, yeah, baby, you want that? <laughs> and by the end of the night, it was eighteen hundred dollars. I started to sell her. You can have her for eighteen hundred dollars. You just bought the kitchen, <laughs> right, man? It was kidding me. Uh, so I'd never do that again. But I, I, I'm telling you, life is 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 all about I think having a great cigar, good glass of wine, absolutely. Nice, uh, you know, woman and uh, yeah. ride. That's it. I, I was gonna say wife, but that would have been redundant. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we better get this in while we have time. <laughs> D.L. Hughley is going to be uh, tonight and tomorrow night at the Comedy and Magic Club in Hermosa Beach, which uh, is a great venue. It is a great venue. Great venue. I dig it. And uh, yeah, and uh, the South Bay is a great place to hang really, out in the yeah. evening and summertime. I mean, this is the time to be there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is, I mean, you know what? It's so cool to be able to play places that are cl- like I grew up going to Hermosa Beach and Redondo Beach. Used to go. One of my favorite restaurants used to be Tony on, Tony's on the Pier. Oh, Tony's on the Pier. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, I haven't been there in a long time. I, 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 but I, but it, it, it's just people. You go all over the world. You go all over the country, and you see a lot of things. Nothing is like Southern California. No, nothing. No, nothing. You can say no. whatever you want. No. About New York, you can say whatever you want. They're great cities, Miami, great city, but the best city in the country, the best place in the country, is Southern California. Do you miss it when you're gone? Absolutely, not till about the fourth day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I understand. I, go, I understand. Damn, I understand. When I was in Burgundy, I didn't miss it for a few days. <laughs> right. and eventually, though, I I did start to miss it. Right. So that's going to be tonight and tomorrow night. D. L. Hughley at the Comedy and Magic Club under Mosa Beach. If you want to make a reservation to see him, you should call 310-372-1193. It's 310-372-1193. And you're going to be hosting the BET Awards. I'm hosting the BET Awards. It's, it's, uh, I'm really excited. Uh, we're, we're close to doing a, a, a show with HBO. I'm excited about that. So it's, it's going pretty good. I'm having a good time. Man. It's all good. Yeah. It is always great to see you. Good to see you too, man. So I'm telling you, next week. I'm, I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm coming by. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm storming the wine cellar. That, come on Everything now. I can't pronounce getting poured. We always put the good stuff out for you. <laughs> if it say Ripple, I'm leaving it. I, I understand. <laughs> D.L. Hughley, see him today at the Comedy of Magic Club. The Tom Likas Show. Write us Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.